a leader and a scholar in 19th century Nigeria who paved the way for modern women's education. On this episode of Humble History, we are going to dive deep into the life of Nana Asma. Turn your time machines to 1793 and let's get into it right now. Nana Asma'u was born into a family of prominent Muslim scholars. She was educated from a young age in topics that included religion, mysticism, and legal matters. She was also learned in four languages, which were Fulfulde, Hausa, Arabic, and Tamashek. Her father, Usman Danfodio, who was a popular teacher of Islam, was persecuted by the ruler of the neighboring state of Gobir. Eventually, he fought back in what later became known as the Fulani Wars. Nana Asmao spent her teenage years supporting her father until his victory in 1804, which led to the establishment of the Sokoto Caliphate. After the war, Usman Danfodio emerged as the leader of the newly found caliphate. He appointed Nana Asmao to the position of leader of women. The caliphate prioritized the scholarship and teaching of Islam to its people, the majority of whom were new converts. Nana Asmao excelled in her writings tailored to this segment of the population. She used poems and other forms of writing to teach many of the new converts the doctrine of their new religion. Along with poems, Nana Asmao and her husband wrote nine works on the history of the Fulani Wars. Her writing made her notable not only in Sokoto but across West Africa where she had correspondence with other women scholars. She created a system dedicated to women education called the Yantaru or the Associates. The Yantaru were made up of women teachers called Jajis, trained by Nana Asmao. Once the Jajis completed their training, they were given a malfa or a ceremonial hat symbolizing their status as teachers. Since men were not allowed to enter the home of married women, the Jajis were responsible for educating them in their homes. The Jajis would have journeyed with a copy of Asmao's instructional poems. An example of one of her poems was The Path of Truth, which was written in Hausa in 1842. For the ones in the right path, she wrote of heaven. Let us dwell there and drink milk and honey, and enjoy bliss together with Ahmada. For there is no illness, no aging, no poverty, no death. We remain forever. Forever in enjoyment, relaxation, and pleasant talk. We walk in paradise. We have seen Muhammada. A keynote in her poetry is that Asma put her authorship into the poem itself. If anyone asks who composed the song, say that it is Nanna, the daughter of the Shehu, who loves Muhammad. You should firmly resolve friends to follow her, and thus you will follow exactly the Sunnah of Muhammad. This stanza not only emphasized Asma's authorship of the text, but also places her as an authority of Islamic thought and practice. Nana Asmao passed away peacefully in 1864. Her memory is revered in Nigeria to this day. In 2019, the governor of the Sokoto State gave the directive to begin work on the Nana Asmao University of Medical Sciences. Yantaru communities continue to exist to this day and have expanded from Nigeria to Senegal, South Africa, and the United States. Today, Nana Asmao is seen as an exemplar of scholarship, teaching, and leadership, not only in her home region, but all around the world. If you want to learn more about this topic, check out the academic resources listed in this episode. The links are in the description below. If you want to keep up with future episodes, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out. I'm your host, Efrata Orko. This episode was written by Adam Sahalu, and we'll see you on the next episode of Humble History.